I don't know if you have heard the news, but Unreal Engine 5.4 has just arrived, and once again, it is packed with new intriguing features and improvements. With new and exciting toolset, they have been using to build and ship the likes of Fortnite Chapter 5, Rocket Racing, Fortnite Festival, and LEGO Fortnite. So what are these tools in question, and are they worth the hype? Before we continue, if you are a beginner 3D artist, or if you have been doing 3D art for a while now, and you don't know how to monetize your 3D skills, you are not alone. Because as a 3D artist myself, I have struggled with this for a long time. That's why I'm happy to announce that we created a class outlining some of the best ways to monetize your 3D skills. In this class, I'm gonna share with you 5 methods that will help you make a living from your 3D art, at least the foundation of it. The class is now on Skillshare, and I will appreciate it a ton if you wanna check it out. We will go through some obvious but overlooked stuff, and of course, some common practices. And whether you are a beginner or a seasoned 3D artist, I'm sure you will find useful things. Please check out the class and help support the channel. Also, the first 100 people to sign up using our code will get a month-long free subscription of Skillshare. First things first, and honestly, the part that made me raise an eyebrow about this update is the new character animation toolset. Historically speaking, Unreal and other game engines have always had a tough time with character animation. To not say it is impossible to achieve it in them, as we could see through the frustration of many users pulling their hair over it. That's why it was always the case that animation was done in software such as Maya, Blender, or 3ds Max. However, with this release, Unreal Engine broke out of the norms once again and introduced us to a new animation paradise for quick, easy, and enjoyable rigging and animation. You know, without going back between software such as Unreal and Maya or Unreal and Blender. So let's see what they put in place. As a starting point, we've got the new modular control rig features. I know, that sounds complex, but just hear me out. Led by the likes of Chase Cooper, a senior technical product manager at Epic Games, with a profound understanding of rigging, modular control rig, we have a brand new interactive system that can convert any rig into ready to animate skeleton in just a few seconds, which is just impressive. So, instead of manually building rig interactions like IK, FK, and all those antics, if we look at the left menu, we can see icons that indicate, for example, elements such as lag, foot, arm, or position. Then simply drag and drop it into the part where we want the rig to be in, and it will work like a charm. For instance, with the leg rig module, we can move the foot, and the rest of the leg will interact accordingly. To add to that, the entire animation landscape of Unreal Engine was changed, for the better of course, such as the new automatic retargeting features that make it easier to transfer animations between bipedal characters such as humans. Well, as long as they are using known skeleton types, which makes sense. Besides, the skeleton editor is also way faster now and offers more functionalities. For those of you who are wondering, it is a way to fix those annoying rig issues that nobody asked for like weight painting, polygroups, and more. And by the way, the sequencer and animation tools got their fair share of love too, because we have a suite of fresh functions that make the deformer graph more accessible and less confusing, to create funny animations that can even give Pixar a run for its money, as well as new experimental gizmos. But what is it? Well, think of it as a way to easily and quickly post characters, just by moving the middle mouse button. Also, the video sequencer has undergone a complex makeover, with improved readability and usability in various aspects, including new control rig features to create animations from it directly. And the cherry on top, we have motion matching, which is a long-awaited feature, and it is finally product ready. In fact, it has been tested in Fortnite Battle Royale and was shipped on all platforms from mobile to console and it is running on all 100 characters plus NPCs. But you might be wondering, what is that anyways? Just like how the name suggests, it is an expandable next-gen framework to make transitions between animations. So, instead of relying on complex logic 
to select and transition animations that most of us don't care about anyways, it relies on a large database of captured animations. Then, it looks at whatever your character is doing, I mean in the game right now, and uses that to pick an animation from the database to blend it in as a third animation between two animations. Well, it is more complex than that, but you get the idea, I think. If you remember what we talked about earlier, Unreal Engine used to frustrate many users with its character animation shortcomings. But let's not forget about motion graphics. Personally, I always believed that the software had a lot of potential in that area. And sure, some managed to pull it off. But there was always this feeling that it was missing something. And let me tell you the good news. This is no longer the case. Starting with version 5.4, Unreal Engine introduced a long-anticipated motion design experimental mode that was developed alongside production testing and feedback from leading broadcasters. So it is packed with a set of specialized tools that are already well established in the motion graphics market and some of the best techniques in the industry. And for that, they have added four fundamental concepts of motion graphics through a series of menus, cloners, animators, modifiers and effectors, and we can go at them in detail in another video. But the general idea is that there are ways to create the typical motion graphics that we know and love, such as product visualization, title sequences, and even a chaos of objects all over the place. We can use these four elements to duplicate, edit, and animate shapes based on a pattern for example, or by changing things like position, scale, and rotation of objects. To create more organic looks. However, can it be a competitor to Cinema 4D for example? Let us know what you think in the comments section below. And a new addition to the Unreal Engine roster is that we have the new Unreal Cloud DDC and the improved Zen storage. As you have probably noticed, Unreal Engine proved to be more than just a game engine because nowadays it is used across all the entertainment industries and beyond, with new jobs being posted on a daily basis. However, in our current day and age, not everyone is at the same office, and remote jobs are more popular than ever. For that, they presented the Unreal Cloud DDC as a solution. DDC, or Derived Data Cache as it is known, is a system within Unreal Engine that stores asset data like shaders and texture compressions, and it is stored in a way that allows the engine to quickly access the content without going through the long loading each time. And Unreal Cloud DDC is a cloud-based storage solution that a team can host and it can be accessed by any team member online, instead of relying on local storage, which makes a lot of sense. And for Zen Storage, it is their local DDC that was further enhanced with faster performance and load time and it is a way to store assets on a local storage server rather than a loose file on a local system of a computer. And you know how it is with these. It can be lost at any given moment. Other than that, there are some things or a few other things worth mentioning. And honestly, it is one of the biggest updates in recent times, but it can't be fully covered in this video alone. For example, the virtual camera tool is finally production ready and fully supported on Mac in addition to support of Android. And on a side note, the mobile application is now renamed Unreal VCam, which is available in both Apple stores and Google Play. And on the VR front line, they are also introducing an experimental new fully customizable toolkit that uses an XR creative framework to support OpenXR HMDs. We are getting out of topic here, but in a way, it is an open standard for developing VR and AR applications that work across different hardware platforms. From a virtual production side of things, we can now use the real-world camera position and lens parameters to add a corrected depth of field in Unreal Engine on the LED wall to compensate for any extra blur from the actual camera lens, among many other tools. However, throughout these technical marvels, there might be a price to pay after introducing the new pricing model. But what are the details?
What's important to take notice of with this update is that this isn't just a CGI revolution, but also the start of a new pricing model of Unreal Engine, in addition to Twin Motion and Reality Capture, which is now in effect as it was announced in March, which according to their statement, it will make them able to fund future engine development for all creators. But don't worry, it's not gonna be like the Unity drama, which was really bad and shows the poor planning of Unity as a company. So the following release of Unreal Engine 5.4, they have introduced this new seed-based model of $1,850 per seed per year, which is as far as I know, a software license model based on the number of individual users who have access to a digital server or product. And before you freak out, no, you'll be fine, because this will be only applicable to companies generating over a million dollars annually of gross revenue and who are not creating video games. This means that the license isn't changing for game developers, who will continue to pay only 5% royalty on products that exceed a million dollar in lifetime gross revenue, whereas other industries would have to stick to this new model. So game developers are safe for now. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.